we are very very grateful to God in this hour because the Lord is unleashing a lot of good word to us in this hour God is unleashing his very best so that we can shine once more as sons of God praise God everything we are hearing today it's all about causing us to realize or to attain to the place of the all power. It is written that he has given to as many as receive him the power to reign. He has given them the power to rule and to reign in life as sons of God. See, not that he didn't say that he has given them power to remain ever attaining to, ever becoming, but rather he has given them the power to come to the place of all power and all rest. Praise God, he has given us the power to rule and to reign right now. It's all within our reach. It's all for us right now to rule and to reign as sons of God. Praise God. The time has come to rule and to reign as sons of God, the power we receive is through the faith in the world that we hear from above today, that celestial testimony revealing the secrets of life. Praise God. Job 33 speaks about a man who is languishing languishing in his pit in the pit of humanity a man who is continuously sinking down into the realm of death revealing the pitiable situation of the man of this age who died he dies it's a continuous process of death Dying, the man continuously dies. He continuously deviates from the true life and from the true power. Dust you are, dust you will return, which is the cause that humanity received in the transgression. It's a situation whereby a man continuously sinks down that path of sorrow and death, never ending woes, never ending sorrows, never ending pain, always ripping tistles and taunts, always sweating, always sorrow, and it never seems to end for mankind. But thank God today for the evangel, for the gospel from heaven. It says that. As many as, as you know, receive him, he has given them the power to become sons of God. He has given them the power to rule and to reign as it was predestined from, from, you know, from the Father from the beginning. Because it does not give the Father pleasure to see his sons perishing. He does not give his, the, the father pleasures to see his sons going through the hurts and the pains that they go through in life. That's why he has sent this messenger. Job 33 says that if there be one out of a thousand, see, I would advise you to go back and read Job chapter, chapter 33. If there be one out of a thousand to show unto man, 
His righteousness. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. If there be a witness, a messenger, an angel, one out of a thousand, to show to man his righteousness, God will be gracious and he will say, release that man. See it. Lift him up so that he does not go down anymore into that pit. So I found a ransom for him. Praise God. This is the desire of God for every man today. He doesn't want any man to perish. God so loved the world that he has given us today the Son. The revelation of the Son of God by which we can escape the death, corruption, pain, sorrow, and all the you know the evils we see in this atmosphere of wickedness. All is within our reach today. What a man needs to do is just to receive. Praise God. Job 33 speaks about how God constantly tries to avert man, constantly tries to, you know, admonish man, to edify man, to speak to man through visions, through a word. Oh, hallelujah. Speaking to man constantly. See, to redeem him from that pitiable situation. But like we know, hardly, hardly do men hear. Men rarely hear the things of God. Men are distracted with the problems. They are distracted with the situations down there. Praise God, and rarely do they understand that the solution to the problem is not to be there trying to solve the problem, but rather to hear the voice of the Spirit and allow the voice of the Spirit lead you into the place of all power and all glory so that you can shine with the light of life so that you can once more return to the days of your youth to the days of your perfection so that you can once more shine as the sun oh hallelujah it's all within you right now Receive this testimony from heaven. Receive this word from the Spirit today. See, it's all about hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Man, I'm here. Praise God, no more do we listen to the voices of men. To the voices of men down there. The voices of men will only toss you to and fro. And you will never find rest for your souls. That which will lead you to that path of life. And you will establish you in a place of all power and all rest. Is the guidance, the guidance of the Spirit of God. But because the Spirit of God will lead you to the right hand of God. To the place of pleasures. It will lead you to the place of immortality. A realm where the worms and the canker worm don't exist. A realm where the pain and the sorrows are no more. They disappear forever. This thing is attainable right now, but you rarely the people get there. Very few people get there. Very few people will get there because they are distracted. They are not able to concentrate on the guardians of the spirit and others are you know don't have the ability to see beyond and to embrace the invisible things of god they would rather cling to the earthly things they would rather cling to a system or an order that is passing away that is why many today let this message pass them by but I know this is not your portion today. Your portion is to hear this message, embrace it, and to come out of that pit and to reign in life. Praise God. Hallelujah. We have a high priest. 
like we know, a high priest who the Bible says has pierced through the heavens, he passed through the heavens. When you you know go to the original translation, it says that we have a high priest who has pierced into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Hope oh, hallelujah. Seeing then that we have this high priest who has pierced into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us all fast, you know, unto our profession, unto our confession. What are we confessing? What is our profession? We are confessing that Christ, the Son of God. So we are professing and confessing newness of life. New creature, new life, new heavens, new earth. Praise God. By faith, we hold on to the life of the Son of God. Seeing that we have a high priest who has pierced through the heavens, who has passed through the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. A priest who understands what we go through as men in this world, who, who, who experience everything that we experience, yet was without sin. Let us therefore boldly, you know, come unto the, that throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace in the time of need. Praise God. Heaven is strong. So let us come boldly to the front. Heaven is the front of God. The heavens of heavens. Jesus Christ descended and tasted of the loneliness, the loneliness of humanity. He tasted of the bondages. He tasted of death. He tasted of a sense of separation from the life of the supreme and only God. He tested it. That is the root of mankind's problem today. Mankind is unable to, you know, comprehend the fact or fathom the fact that in reality he is one with the living God. Praise God. Now the the, the thorns and the tissues and the sweating and the sorrows and the pains and the hearts, all these things originate from that sensation of being apart from the living God. That sensation of lacking something, of being not complete, of not being complete. Jesus Christ went through it too. See, but the Bible says that he pierced through the heavens, he passed through the heavens. He passed through the dimensions of men. He passed through the realms of men. He pierced through that dark, dense atmosphere of condemnation, of guilt, of fear. The atmosphere of men. He faithfully pierced through this atmosphere to rediscover his true life in God. Oh, hallelujah. Now, this is the path for every child of God today. When Paul says that we should come boldly before the throne, he's speaking about piercing through the atmospheres of man piercing through the beliefs of men and going on to the other side to take a hold of that true life that was lost in the fall in our transgression in the, in the day we went to sleep oh praise God so that we can rule and reign once more heaven is the throne of God to attain to the place of heaven is to attain to the place of all dominion and all pleasures. Praise God. You know, Jesus Christ said, always spoke about my father who is in heaven. Praise God. Those who are able to pierce through this 
dense atmospheres of lies, of spiritual wickedness and darkness, those who pierce through by faith are able to once more realize the life of the Father God. That's why Jesus Christ says, I go to the Father. I go to my Father and your Father, my God and my God, and you also must ascend back to your God and to your Father. You also must attain to that place of perfection and light. And it's done by faith, by realizing and hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour. Hallelujah. And what's about what is the Spirit saying? The Spirit is testifying of the Christ. Oh, praise God. The Spirit is testifying of the Christ in you. The Spirit is testifying of the glorious creature that you are. The Spirit is testifying of your true nature and your true origin in the Almighty One. Oh, praise God. It is the ability of a man to hear what the Spirit is saying that will save him. It's so not a wrangling of religion of beliefs and all these things that men do around. Not the formation of groups or trying to do this or that, but rather how you can apply what the Spirit is saying, you know, in this hour to your life. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. God wants you to shine once more as the sun in his kingdom. Praise God. That same Jesus that transfigured upon the mountain of transfiguration, the Bible says that his face was like what? The sun in its brilliance, shining. Hallelujah. But Jesus had to take a journey upwards, a three days journey. And you know how it is to go up you know, heights, to climb up mountains. And by, the mountain must have been very high. To go three days up a mountain means that they did a lot of work, a lot of trekking with luggage and all that, to go up three days up a mountain. You can't shine down there as a man. You can't shine there in the spheres of religion and in the, in the realm of the multitude. You can't shine down there. You have to pierce through the heavens and go to the very pinnacle of Zion. See, then you will realize that face that shines as the sun. Praise God. Jesus will not shine down there upon the earth as the sun, rather, up there. And it's a path every child must, must, path, must tread to glory. Hallelujah. To get up there, Jesus Christ was, Jesus as a man, he was led by the Spirit up there. 144,000 upon Mount Zion, Revelation chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah. These ones who were standing upon Mount Zion, redeemed from among men. How did they get there? It was the guardians of the lamp. The guardians of the seven eyes of the lamp that led this 144,000, the company of the redeemed, those who have attained to the fullness and to the perfection of God, these ones were led by the seven eyes of the lamp upon Mount Zion. And they have the Father's name upon their head, meaning a new nature. They have attained to the place of Godship. They have rediscovered their life in God. See, but they were redeemed from the earth, meaning down there they cannot attain to that place as long as they remain as men. Praise God. That is what the Spirit is doing today. Showing us a path how to ascend. See, how to pierce through this stratosphere of wickedness. 
and attain to the place of all life and all power. Praise God. Everything that we need to attain to that place has been freely given to us today by Spirit. It's a matter of asking and you will receive freely from God. Because God will not withhold anything from His sons. Hallelujah. How can we shine? Praise God. Because God is not here to cause you to form a new religion, a new group of the called, you know, the called out. And the called out are out there waiting for something to happen and, you know, looking out to prophecies and, you know, waiting for, the, for something to happen in Jerusalem or something to happen in the sky or, you know, and all these kind of things. You go around in circle and circle and at the end of your life cycle, you just discover that you never even attained to that promise that God intended for you from the foundation of the world. Praise God. Jesus Christ gave the parable of the, the sower. See, a man sowed, you know, some seed, good seed on the ground, and Bible wrote, writes it subtly, now this is in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, the parable of the sower. The man sows the good seed, and while men slept, while men slept, something happened. And what happened? The wicked one, the enemy, came to plant ties or ties. These are, you know, fake plantings, weeds, among the the good seed. So somewhere along the line. When the good seed grew out of the ground, the weeds also grew. And the servants went to the, to the master and said, look, what happened? You know, we can see weeds growing with your, with your good seed. And we know you did not plant weeds there. And the, the master says it, it is the enemy, the wicked one, who has done this. And the servants volunteer to go out and, you know, to remove the weeds. But the, the, the master says, no, wait until the, uh, to the harvest time. Then we're going to, you know, during the harvest, we weed out the weed and, you know, separate the, the, the weed from the shaft, the good seed from the shaft. Praise God. Now, all these are parables to reveal the mystery of the Christ in us to reveal the end of the matter. But the, this thing goes hand in hand with the end of this world, the end of this age, the end of this world is actually the end of the belief of separation from man, you know, between man and God. That is what the world is actually. The world is ignorance of what God is. The world is ignorance of what the Son is. That is the world. If I walk ignorant that I am, I am the anointed of God, if I walk ignorant that I am one with God, I'm actually you know, in the world. I'm already in outer darkness. That's the world. Praise God. But if I know myself the way I'm known on the Father, if I know myself as the Son, I'm actually not of this world. Because the Son of God is not of this world. The world represents ignorance. Of what the Son of God is and what the Father is. So the harvest comes and Jesus Christ gave, you know, he explained the parable of this good sower so and all of it. says that the sower that sows the good seed is the Son of Man, praise God, and the field, you see, it, is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, hallelujah, but the ties are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Hallelujah. And the harvest is the end of the world. Praise God. And the reapers are the angels. Hallelujah. And therefore the tithes are gathered and born in the fire. So, hallelujah. So shall it be what? In the end of this age. The Son of Man, you see, shall set forth his what his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend 
and them which do iniquity. Praise God. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Hallelujah. And there shall be willing and you know, gnashing of teeth. So then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in his heart. He who has an ear, let him do what? Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in his hour. You are the church. Praise God. And the church is not some kind of something in the corner somewhere, you know, some kind of building in the corner somewhere. No. You are the church. The church is actually the body of Christ. Praise God. No matter where you find yourself today, you are the church. Praise God. And the voice has come again. The voice of the Spirit has come to redeem the church. To bring her to the place of that perfection without spot and without wrinkle. Oh, hallelujah. To bring her back to her glory, her lost glory. You are the church. You are the body of Christ. You are the bride of the Christ. You are the new Jerusalem. You are the one who has been from eternity. And the Father is here to restore you back. Praise God. The Father is here to bring an end of this world order. The world represents darkness, ignorance of what God is. See, the world is under the sway of the wicked one. So who is the wicked one? The wicked one is the one who denies the Christ, the Son of God. He's not aware of it, rather. He's not aware of the things of God. Get thee behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. Thou knowest not the things of, of God, but the things that be of the men of the darkness of this world, the men of this age. So that is the knowledge, the wisdom with which men operate in this world. The depths of Satan is darkness. Is unaware of God's marvelous kingdom, unaware of God's kingdom of light, this infinite, invisible kingdom. Satan is unaware of it, and that is walking through the carnal mind. Hallelujah. He, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in his day. Your ability to hear is what will lift you out of the pit of death. Because the whole world is already dying. Praise God, the, 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 the worm and the, you know, the caterpillar is already feeding sweetly on the flesh of the inhabitants of this world. They are already perishing in their sins and transgression. Sin and transgression is simply deviation from your, from your true incorruptible immortal self to that of mortal man, that is the transgression. And you pay heavily with the sorrow and the pain and all the, the torments you go through as a man separated from the living God. Without God and without Father in this world. Praise God. Now the harvest has come. God is sending for his messengers. Now a messenger can appear to you as a messenger, a, a minister. And the messengers are also there in the invisible. Praise God. It's all about the Spirit of God. They all are praying to that same Spirit of God testifying of the Christ in you. The messenger of God will only speak what he hears the Father says. So with the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God only speaks what he hears the Father say. Praise God. And have you wondered where we go to when we, when we leave this body? We, we are that same spirit of God. We are that same spiritual, you know, that spirit of God. That Holy Spirit, we are the one. Because he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So, hallelujah, we speak with the word of God. We, we, we speak from the heart of God, from the mind of God, and we operate with the mind of God. So God first sent forth his messengers. And all the messengers can do is to bring to light the hidden mystery 
of Christ to bring to light the hidden things of God. The deep things of God, he brings them to light. To a world that is, you know, languishing in darkness. Hallelujah. The angels and the messengers come to illumine the world. That is why when you see in the book of Revelation or in the, in the, or in the, in, in the Gospels, or whatever, when you see the angels appear, they always seem to be brilliant with light. Why? They are, when they appear, the, the light seems to lighten up the whole place. Why? Because they bring forth the revelation truth of God. Oh, hallelujah. And as they do this for what they are doing is that they go into the harvest, gathering, you know, the sons of God back into God's kingdom through the message, through the evangel. So the wheat and the shaft, which has got to do with anything carnal, anything that has got to do with the lie. Now, that the lie is simply that which denies the Christ, denies the things of God. That is carnality. That which is of the flesh, flesh and blood, mortality, all these things are cast into the furnace. So, and all these things are happening in you right now as you are hearing the word. The lie is being dissolved. The lie of yours, about yourself, about who you truly are, about your origin, all these things are being dissolved today. The sensation of being separate from God, the sensation of being unworthy of God's glory, the sensation of being separate from God, all those things are being born right now in the lake of fire. As you hear the word of truth, as the messengers testify of the things of God. Praise God. Now all these things come out as we yield ourselves to the Spirit. Yield ourselves to the voice of the Spirit. Yield ourselves to the things of the Spirit and exercise ourselves to the things of the Spirit. Because once you've heard this message, there's something that is sparked up within you that will never quench. See, it is called an unquenchable fire. Throughout all eternity, it never quenches. Any trace of carnality, any trace of mortality, any trace of earthly mindedness, you know, mindedness in us is dissolved by the truth that fire that burns within us. It can never be quenched, never, throughout all eternity. Hallelujah. And we become sons of, you know, of God with power fire because we live and you know have our being in that consuming fire. Isaiah says that who shall dwell with a consuming fire? Who shall, who shall live, who shall abide with everlasting body? Our dwelling is in God who is a consuming fire. But how come we are not consumed? Because we have the same nature with God, we are spirit. And we have no material element in us. Praise God. When men sleep, that is when the enemy awakes. When men sleep in mortality, when they go to sleep, then they form a world system of beliefs and spiritual wickedness. A realm where there's no peace, there's conflict of interest that never seems to end. Oh, hallelujah. We thank God today we are hearing the word of God that, we del that delivers man right now from this realm of death. Causing man to shine once more as the sun in their father's kingdom. Jesus Christ says at the end of all this, hallelujah, after the the gathering and the burning of the ties and the gathering of the good seed in the barn, the children of God, the sons of the living God, will shine as the sun in the kingdom of the Father. As you can hear this word today, He has given you the power to shine 
as the Son of God. He has given you the power to shine as the one that transfigured upon the mountain of transfiguration. He has given you power to shine as the Alpha and the Omega. When John saw the Alpha and the Omega in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 16, I think, when he looked at him and observed the appearance of the Alpha and the Omega, he was taken up into heaven, into the high spiritual places of elevation in God, and as he, as he looked, he beheld the majesty of the one that lives in eternity. He was actually beholding the majesty of you and I because that is our inheritance. That is our crown of glory. That is our exceeding great reward. John was seeing the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of all mankind and the end of all mankind. See, when man goes to sleep, he loses track of himself as the, as the beginning of the creation of God, which is the Alpha and the Omega. But when he awakes once more, he discovers himself at the end, in between, there's the world. At the end of it, he discovers himself back as the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. And besides me, there is no other one. I'm he that liveth. Oh, hallelujah. When John turned around to see him, Revelation chapter 1, verse 16, he says that in his right hand he had seven stars. Oh, hallelujah. And out of his mouth went forth, you know, a sharp double edged sword. And his countenance was what? As the sun shineth in his strength, in his brilliance. Have you looked at the sun? Shining in his brilliance at in his brilliance at, at noonday. It talks of pure spiritual consciousness. A pure spiritual consciousness, hallelujah. That can never pass away. That abides eternally. Oh, hallelujah. And he says that I am your exceeding great reward. I am the bright and morning star. The bright and morning star is the sun. I am the bright and morning star shining with such brilliance from eternity to eternity. And he that overcomes will I give the bright and the morning star. Oh, hallelujah. I will give you that nature. Your ability to overcome is how you hear. How you hear the allow the guardians of the spirit lead you out of the realm of, you know, of, the, of the dead back into the heights of God. Those seven stars also at the right hand of the Alpha and Omega, you know it's you and I? These are the messengers of God who stay at the right hand of God you know, power, the place of all pleasures and all power, the place where God gathers his sheep into. Praise God, the sheep are those who are able to, you know, align themselves once more with the Christ, with the one that lives forever. Oh, hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Piercing through the heavens to rediscover that nature as the sun that shines with such great brilliance. We have to pierce through all the heavens, the realms of mankind, the realms of beliefs and condemnation and, you know, all these things that bring about guilt and everything. Religion has not helped. Praise God, religion cannot help you because religion ties a condition to your attaining to God. And of course, religion is not even aware that you are one with God, that you are God. Religion thinks about making you a good man to attain to God. But it's not possible for a man to attain to God's kingdom, but rather that which is born of God, which is spirit. Praise God, hallelujah. 
It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Let us break through right now and reign in life right now. Hallelujah. Praise God. There was a woman who was caught in adultery and she was, she was encompassed with voices. My right, the voices of condemnation. These are the ordinances and the writings against us by the systems of men, the systems of religion, walking through the carnal mind. Everything seems to speak against us, and everything seems to, you know, point the finger at us. But submission to the Christ is what we give the life and the victory that we seek. Submission to the Christ and to the truth is what will give us the victory. All the woman did was to allow the Christ write upon her. See, it? writing upon her with the spiritual finger of God. Hallelujah. Not with flesh and blood, but with the finger of God. It can only occur as we hear the voice of truth. It can only occur as we allow the Christ to reveal to us our true nature. And to confess this thing right now. Because you have been forgiven. You are covered throughout all eternity. And nothing can separate you from the love of God. Hallelujah. Today is the day to reign. Today is the day of your power. Hallelujah, confess the Christ and begin to enjoy your life as a child of God, walking in the purity of the Spirit, walking in the purity of the knowledge of the One who lives forever and forever. This is your hour to shine as the sun. Arise and shine, for your light is come. The revelation of you has come. God bless you.